you okay, take the time. So thank you. Um, so today I'm going to talk about some of the work that we've been doing at the University of Aberdeen in relation to um, assessing, visualising and communicating sustainability. So some of the um, techniques and concepts I think will be applicable to ecosystem services too, so just to give you an idea of what we've been doing. So really what we're interested in is developing a framework that um, gets the right information to the right people um, in the right format to a range of stakeholders with respect to urban sustainability is one of the examples I'm going to present. Um, and that poses a lot of challenges because there's a lot of people that are potentially engaged in the urban sustainability assessment and visualisation. So it could be um, architects, planners, but also community groups. So pre presenting the information in a range of formats that's accessible to all is one of the key challenges. Um, and so the techniques and tools that we use can combine sort of information management and knowledge management techniques together with some modelling and also visualisation methods. Um, to generate this framework that can be applicable to, say, urban, rural sustainability and some other um, management of other resources. So I'll give three examples of um, areas that we've applied this framework. So it really consists of three um, components. One is this assessment phase, so identifying which indicators could be useful for assessing how well a development is progressing in terms of its sustainability. Um, and that really comes about through um, stakeholder interaction, so maybe semi-structured interviews together with workshops to identify what the key indicators are and what information are required by the different stakeholders. Then this would kind of feed into um, a visualisation component, so from this assessment stage you would generate the indicator set and then maybe perhaps do some modelling based on empirical data or process-based modelling, depends on the type of information that's required and the availability of that data. Then you could use different methods to um, convey um, or communicate that the indicator set to a wide range audience and then you could use this visualisation component together with the assessment to identify where key intervention points would be so you would enhance the sustainability of the urban um, environment for example. So we all kind of know what the notion and concept of sustainable development is. So to some it's a bit intangible and it's difficult to put into practice. And I guess that's the same for ecosystem services as well. So we all know what the key, the widely accepted definition of sustainability is. So to be environmentally friendly, socially acceptable and financially viable. So trying to communicate these often conflicting um, objectives to a range of stakeholders is quite difficult. So hence this framework that was developed to help with, with that um, aspect. So part of the first stage is really to do with this indicator selection then. So this is really the information knowledge management component. So identifying who the key stakeholders are, um, holding workshops, um, holding interviews. So maybe you would first do a literature review to identify what are the key indicators for assessing the sustainability of a built or urban um, environment and then taking that to the people that are involved in the, the decision making process to see if they're in agreement um, and then coming to some um, agreement about which would be the indicators that would monitor the progress of the um, urban development. So I should just say this is kind of in line with the work that's been done at Dundee Waterfront which is a 30 year um, regeneration process <coughs> and this is work that we do um, in collaboration with Dundee City Council. So we came up with an indicator set covering those three pillars, so the um, environment, e economic and social aspects of sustainability. And then this basically is what the Dundee City Council use on an annual basis to assess the direction of the um, development to make sure that it's on its sustainability trajectory. So from that, we decided to pilot or create this sort of visualisation tool. We selected six indicators only from that data set because, in fact, there's something like 33 benchmark <coughs> indicators that the council use to monitor progress. So obviously, visualising um, 33 indicators wouldn't be very useful because our cognitive capacity can only deal with maybe seven or eight things that are changing at any one time. So we took a subset of these indicators that span those three pillars of sustainability and we um, then modelled how they would change over time. 
So one of the key aspects, I guess, with sustainability is it changes over space and time. So it's really more than 4D if you've got more than one indicator. So we were trying to take all of this information and convey it in an easily digestible format to a range of different stakeholders. <laughs> so we developed some models, temporal models, which predict um, how these indicators are going to change through time and are then are validated when these uh, benchmark indicators are measured on an annual basis. So there's some validation. And then you can overlay these onto a 3D model of the proposed development so that you get that measure of sustainability. So there's one kind of caveat associated with the ORIT um, hurdle is what do you do with these six indi indicators? Do you combine them somehow, so aggregate them using some um, method, so multi-criteria method, and there's lots of um, disadvantages of doing that, because in the way you lose information by averaging, what do you, how do you know which weight to apply to the different indicators? Different stakeholders will have different opinions on that. So we wanted to uh, develop a flexible framework that overcomes some of that, but also um, preserves the indicators in their raw sense. So what we can do is use um, ANP, which is a multi-criteria assessment method, which allows different stakeholders to sa assign importance or weight to the different indicators to get a single measure, so an aggregated measure of sustainability. And then the other method we looked at was preserving these indicators and <coughs> finding some way to visually communicate them to the stakeholders. So I see there's another talk that's just talking a bit about the, the practicalities and the issues of multi-criteria methods. So this is where really the 3D visualization comes in. We can then visualize that single aggregated sustainability measure or we can keep the um, finer resolution data associated with all of the ag um, indicators and overlay them over the 3D proposed environment. So this is the visualization component of this um, SAVE framework. So what's quite nice about this is you use some of the, the techniques from computer games technology. It's interactive, so it might appeal to some um, stakeholder and demographic groups. So you have a 3D representation of the development. You can move buildings, you can change attributes, and then the models would then be updated. Um, and then the sustainability information would be updated in real time. So this is really about comparing different scenarios. So rather than the traditional method of maybe um, putting through people's doors different 2D plans, you could have a 3D model in a library where users then, members of the community can look at the different scenarios, investigate them in real time, change properties and see um, what effect that has. So this is basically just showing the outward appearance of the waterfront, the proposed development, and the case study looked at the uses of these four lots of buildings at the front of the waterfront here. So it takes in the standard GIS data, Google SketchUp data, um, and models of varying resolution, so some models have more detailed textures associated with them. And so you can easily see that this outward appearance of urban development, but what's more interesting is overlaying the sustainability information on it. So I kind of briefly talked about the different indicators from the different pillars, and then using ANP, which is a multi-criteria assessment method, we can get one measure of sustainability, map that to a color scale, and then overlay that onto the built environment. So the pictures don't really do it justice, but you can have a split screen comparing two different scenarios, and then you immediately get a visual representation of the sustainability. So in this case, it's the different floors have different uses um, in terms of how they're going to be used, whether it's commercial, residential, um, or retail. And we, we conducted a survey to find out what the, the um, inhabitants of Dundee thought the most acceptable use was of this um, space. And also then, I guess you'll have different, you would have different properties over time associated with its energy usage as well. So this runs over time, which is something I can't really show um, on the static um, image. So here then we've got the weave. So this is not combining the indicators, just preserving the, the detail that we have. And then what we can do is because we're not using any um, proprietary software, we've got this model and visualization that are tightly coupled and they're feeding to each other in real time. 
So the, once you compute the results of the model, you can create a texture or a picture, for example, of what the sustainability indicators are at that point in time and at that space. And then you can overlay or drape that over your 3D environment. So although it's a bit more complicated, you've got these indicators here. Each tick of the model, you're quickly generating a texture in real time and then overlaying it onto the building. So here you've got the scenario comparisons. You can easily see per level that there's clear differences. And the darker the colours are, the, the more unsustainable it is. So you can see in this floor, for example, that this magenta colour is quite dominating. Um, and you know that that's associated with housing provision. So we tested these visualisation techniques with a range of stakeholders. So um, city engineers, road planners, um, community groups. And what we were interested in is which methods were useful. There was a couple of other methods too that I've not shown here. So this um, method, most people hated it when they first seen it because it's quite complex and it takes a bit of time just to digest the detail in the image. But the town planners, for example, like this information because it preserved all of the information associated with the sustainability and then they were immediately able to pick out which indicator perhaps was responsible for it, one scenario being relatively better than the other. So the other good thing about this is you can move buildings or change attributes of the, the buildings and the sustainability measures would be updated in real time. So I have a demo if anyone's interested I can show you. But given time we'll quickly move on to the next example. So this again is a, another example of trying to get the right information um, and presenting it to the right people. So this was a collaboration between Atkins Consultants and the UK Water Industry Research. And they had come up with uh, six possible interventions for water treatment. And they were wanting to do conduct a sustainability assessment of these six interventions um, in order to make an informed decision about which one would be the best. So this kind of follows the same pr procedure as in the built um, example. So you find out what the options are from workshops, based expert workshops. Then you basically measure um, social acceptability of the different interventions, some economics associated with the interventions and environmental um, indicators associated with the interventions. And then you can present that in a 3D format, which doesn't replace the traditional um, report that would be produced because that information is vital and needed. It only guides the, the visualisation, but it's a supplement. And what we found is it really does um, engender discussions between different specialist stakeholders. And um, so, for example, the Water Board, there would be a number of different um, companies uh, sitting at around the table and the visualisations just help them <coughs> to engender some discussion about which one would be the most sustainable. So I just speed up a bit. So what we're seeing here is, this is one of the um, data catchments. Um, it's in Norfolk. So the scale is quite considerable compared to the um, last example. So what it's basically trying to show is you've got this river here that has a problem with water quality in terms of phosphate. And we map the phosphate level or the water quality um, from blue to red. Whenever you see a red um, segment in the river, it means that the, it, the, the water quality has failed, so the water board would be fined substantially. So what they were trying, there's a pr real problem with this catchment, so they were looking at different interventions then to alleviate that problem. So this is a measure really of the environmental aspects, and here we've got the economic savings, uh, carbon savings associated with different in interventions. So here we're looking at the baseline, which is actually just do nothing and carry on. And this model is running through time. And then you can explore the impact of the alternative options just by selecting the different um, scenarios. And it will then give you the economic um, and carbon cost as well as the social in indicator. So I must admit the social indicator is a bit difficult to to um, validate, but Atkins basically 
um, conducted the death based study of the economic and carbon um, indicators and social indicators was based on a, another water um, study based on social acceptance of different interventions. So the last one I wanted to talk about is a, wa a project that we're through project that we're doing with Scottish government, and it's uh, slightly different because this is looking at ways to communicate the scope and scale of Scotland's water sector. So it's, um, first of all, to get, uh, evaluate what the scope and scale is and then present that in an interactive format so that decision makers can then use that for a water management tool um, to ensure the sustainability of water, Scotland's water resources given the Hydro Nation agenda. So this um, project, again, used the combination of qualitative and quantitative um, approaches to determine what the scope and scale was and the key interactions between um, different parts of the water sector, then present that in an interactive format. So basically here, we've got some of the diagrams that we would get from this information um, mapping, a knowledge mapping exercise. So um, information flow diagrams, for example, knowledge classification tables, um, how many connections different water companies in the water sectors have. And then these interactive maps present the same information but in a more um, engaging manner and possibly then to support um, decision making. And these maps here then just display the scope and scale data. So we had two different visualizations for different purposes. Um, so I hope I've shown you some tools and techniques that we've used for urban sustainability that potentially could be used in ecosystem services, mapping and communication. Okay.